Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to handle adding new items to our web application. In my case it's going to be adding new comics, but again in your case it could be adding books or hotels or whatever you, that you've based your website around. To do this we've got to do a few things. First we have to create a new route inside of our app.js to handle that. We need to create a new form that users can use to put in the data. And then we need to create another route to actually show that form to the user. So really we're going to end up creating two routes. One's a get route to show the form, and one's a post route for once they submit the form. So let's go ahead and get started. We can open up our app.js. You'll see that I'm still inside my Yelp Comics folder. We've got, at the top here, we've still got our hard-coded data that we're going to get rid of about halfway through this module. And we have our two routes. Right now we have our index, which is our landing page, which is basically nothing right now. And then we have our slash comics, which shows all of the comics we have. So we want app.get slash comics slash new. And this route, the name of this route is important. Again, this is RESTful routing is what we're doing. I'm showing it to you and kind of teaching it to you by example before we really go over what it actually means and, and, and all that kind of stuff, but I promise we will get there. It's just not something I want to focus on right now because being able to create these routes is more important than understanding the theory behind RESTful routing. So slash comics, or it might be slash books, or slash games, or movies, or whatever. Remember, it's the same as this. It's the same as your get route, except it's slash new. Request response, as always. It would probably help if I put this inside the method right there. There we go. So app.get, request response, all that stuff. And all we're going to do right now is res.render comics underscore new. And this is a page we have not yet created. So that's going to be step two, is to go into our views directory and make a new um, touch views slash um, comics underscore new dot ejs. So now that we have that, Don't care about partials right now. Comics and new.ejs. And there's nothing here right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our header or include partials slash header. And then at the bottom, we're going to include our footer. Include partials slash footer. So now that we have that, let's just add a little bit. So let's do an H1. I forget that Gorm doesn't have that the Emmet plugin. So we'll call it add new comic. And then we need a form. Remember, forms need an action and a method. Action is the URL that you're going to submit it to. So we are going to submit it to slash comics, and we have not made this route yet. We have a comics get route, but we do not have a comics post route. And our method is going to be the HTTP verb, in this case, post. This does not have to be capitalized, but it's a convention to do that, um, and it, I just like to. So we've got comics and post, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to get data from the user. We're going to get a title, a description, and an image link, all from the user. So we're going to need three inputs. Input type equals text, name equals title, and we're going to autofocus. And then before that, actually, I need to put a label. Label for title. And this for is where you put the name. Label for title. And then the, it's just going to be title. And then I'm just going to duplicate this. Just copy and paste this twice to make it a bit easier. These two are not going to be autofocused. The label here is going to be description. The name here is description. And then down here we have, we'll call this image link for image. And the name is image. So now we just need a button. Type equals submit. And then we'll say submit. And I'm going to do a bad thing and just put a couple breaks in there. 
instead of actually using CSS to style this yet, just so it's not quite so terrible ugly. So let's go ahead and launch our app and see if it works. Now this, if we submit this, it's not going to work because we haven't made that um, page yet, or that route yet, rather. Get our running URL. Here it is, landing page, enter, comic, so this still works. So let's go to slash new, and now we have our form. So it's working. We have a title, we have a description, and we have an image link. And again, if I submit this, it's going to give us an error. It cannot post because we haven't made that route yet. So we know that's working. Perfect. Let's go back to our app.js and add that route. So app.get landing, app.get slash comics, and I like to put it right here, app.post. It would help if I put my fingers in the right place. Slash comics. And again, remember, we can have the same route here because we're using different methods. Anything that has a get method that goes to slash comics will hit this route. Anything that's using a post method to slash comics will hit this route. Request response. And what we're going to do right now, all we're going to do is console.log um, request.body. And then we are going to res.redirect back to slash comics as a get request. So what this is going to do is whenever the user submits the form, they're going to be on this page, this um, comic slash new, they're going to submit the form. The form is going to make a post request right here. Right now it's just going to log that data to the console and then redirect them to this route. So let's give it a go. Let's refresh our page. Title is, um, I don't know, X-Men. Description is Xavier's X-Men. Whatever. Image link. I need to find an image. X-Men. Images. And let's find one that is labeled for reuse. Here we go. This is just terrible enough to meet our needs. So let's copy the image location and we're going to paste it into there. Submit. Cannot post to slash comics. So something's not right. I, I must not have saved this page. Let's go back. Try that again. Submit. There we go. Came back. But you'll notice there's nothing new here. Why not? Well, request.body is undefined. Do you remember why? It's because we did not install body parser yet. And remember, Express does not give us access to the request.body by default. We have to include that npm package. So to fix that, npm i body parser. So now we've installed body parser. We just have to configure it. So up here at the top, let's import it. Const body parser equals require body hyphen parser. And remember, you can pick whatever variable names you want for this stuff. It does not matter. This is the convention. This is what you're going to see most of the time. But if you like something else, feel free to use it. Just be aware that you may tick some people off if you don't follow the conventions when you start working with them. App.use, body parser, dot URL encoded, passing in an object that says extended, true. This is just boilerplate that you're just going to have to put on. Again, first time I mentioned this, I showed you the docs. You're welcome to look at the docs to see exactly what this does. And you can change this if, if you have a reason to. 99% of the time, you're not going to. You're not going to need to. So just memorize this boilerplate, basically, and you're good to go. So now that we've done that, we should have access to request.body. So let's start our server again. Let's go to comics slash new. Title X-Men, Xavier's X-Men, and post in our image link again and submit. Let's see if it works. There we go. We now have access. We got our title, our description, and our image. So the next step, instead of just console.logging that, we can leave that just so we can see it, but we want to add it to our array of data. Our data is called comics, so we're just going to do comics.push request.body. And I mentioned before, I want to mention this again, this is very bad practice. You don't want to just take input from the user and immediately shove it into your, your database or anything like that. That's how you get um, injections, like SQL injection attacks and things like that, cross-site scripting, things like that. That's very bad. Don't do this in a production web application. However, for learning purposes, this is fine. We'll get into how you can kind of sanitize your inputs later. So save. Now it's running. 
and we can do one more time go back here and submit this and now we have been able to add that to our database of comics and we can do that as many times as we want and it will just continue to populate them one thing to note and this is just just one of the quirks with flexbox you notice this is in the middle instead of on the left where most people would put it that's just because of the way that flexbox works it's always going to stick it to the middle you could play around with CSS for a couple hours and finally make this go over here, but it's, it's, it's going to be very challenging. Um, so just keep that in mind. In further videos, I'm planning on refactoring all of this to include Bootstrap. Um, if you, oh, You've heard me talk about Bootstrap before. Some of you may or may not have played with it, but we're going to add Bootstrap. We're going to make a nav bar, and then we can use that Bootstrap to make this a little bit prettier and a little bit better user experience. In this video, we did a few things. We added two new routes to our app.js. We added a post route, which accepts data from the user and adds it to our database, our quote database, unquote. We also added a git route to slash comic slash new that renders a, um, a form that users can fill out with data. We also created that form inside of our views folder right there, comics underscore new. The form we created has an action of slash comics and a method of post. So it's sending a post request to slash comics. It's got three inputs. Each of those inputs comes from the actual format of our data. We have title, description, and image. So whenever a user wants to add one, we need that information. We got title, description, and image. We also imported the npm package body parser, which allows us to access that form data on the back end. We imported it right here, and then we used it. We set it up with this spoiler plate. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.